Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how I made this necklace out of primarily scrap wire. Um, there's nothing saying that you can't use fresh wire for it, like fresh off the spool, but I found this is a great way to utilize all those odd bits and pieces that um, they're too big to put into the recycling bin but they're not quite big enough to do maybe big projects with. But uh, you can add in whatever beads and stuff that you like. All the tools and materials will be down in the video description below. Let's get started. <laughs> so here I'm working on making a bunch of little spirals from randomly lengthed, colored, and thickness of scrap wire that I've been saving from other projects. It's mostly 16 and 18 gauge enameled copper core para wire. Uh, there will be links down to all the different tools and, and materials that I'm using down below. But I think this is an excellent way to practice just making spirals, bunch and bunches and bunches of different little spiral terms. And you can see I'm using just a bit of some painter's tape <clears throat> to hold that down to my steel block. I'm going through with my heaviest hammer and just, just hammer it till you're happy. <laughs> Again, this is a wonderful piece to experiment. Uh, you know, it's wire that might have just gone, you know, forever in the scrap bin anyways, so hammer it as little or as much as you like in as many different ways as you like, because you never know what's going to appeal to you until you've tried it. <clears throat> it causes a bit of spreading whenever I hammer on the closed loop portion, so that's going to be like the attachment loop, uh, so I do go back in with my round nose pliers and, you know, kind of tighten things back up. So that first spiral was very open and organic. Um, whereas this one, I'm using my bent nose pliers, though you could also use like nylon jaw or something, or even just your fingers, to make a very tight, almost industrial, you know, watchwork coil looking, um, springy spiral. Sorry, I forgot what they are called for a sec. Uh, again, and I just reuse that tape until it doesn't have any tack left in it, but it saves my fingertips from getting hammered on. And I don't really work that fast, I put it into fast forward. <laughs> But, uh, and now here I'm working with a much shorter piece of wire compared to the other couple, you know, uh, ones that I've made. And it makes just a very nice little, you know, almost like uh, the tendril at the end of a pea vine or something. But, um, but yeah, and you could add beads to these. You could use different shapes, like instead of during, doing a round spiral like this, you could do a pointed or squared off spiral. Oh, super blurry. There we go. And I just made them out of coiled wire, thinner wire, every single different color. I, I tried to focus very much on making this piece very random. So I'd almost not quite close my eyes and rummage about, but basically I closed my eyes and rummaged about and just used whatever I picked up. Now to give it a sense of like congruency, is that a word? Sure. Um, I did use all matching beads. <clears throat> and I've just threaded it up on some longer, this was scrap wire from making like a big batch of finger rings, and I began by threading it through the bead and then bending the one end of the wire in one direction and the other end in the other, and then just circling it around as shown here. I'm going to be demonstrating it a few times. Um, and then I, I want to do like a split ring effect, so sorry, I, I know it's gone blurry, but um, I'm just building up a stack of loops on the nose of my pliers and this is an alternative to doing to doing a wrapped loop it, it does add you know security like a little bit more durability especially if you're using like a 20 gauge wire or something um, but with a very different look from doing a wrapped loop so there you can see a little more up close and it just gives a fun little effect and you could use any beads you can do this without beads like in place of the bead you could just use the tip of your pliers so now that that piece that we the first link that we had done was with quite a long piece of wire this is demonstrating using a short piece and so I'm not doing nearly as many rotations around well oh, throw it on the floor <laughs> I'm not doing nearly as many rotations around the bead as what I did in the original uh, you know, in the first one. But again, the focus here is on very, very random experimenting with the same technique, but in slight variations, just because again, you never know how something's going to come out. You know, uh, sometimes something as minimal as just, you know, 
changing the wire gauge can completely change the look of a piece or the number of rotations around it. I actually really like that one. It's just a wee bitty. <laughs> and you can get in there with your pliers and like smush down the loops and stuff and get everything tidied. Now I am going through, again, for a sense of like continuity. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, I'm using some jump rings that I had made using some 18 gauge para wire. And I, I told them that I'll do like 10 you know, spirals attached with a jump ring to a bead link. And again, focusing on being random, uh, I'm purposefully ignoring what color of spiral I'm pairing up with what color of bead link. Um, because again, I want it to be super duper random. <laughs> And sometimes it'll be like, oh, no, I can't, like, I, even if they do match, I don't stop myself from letting them match, if that makes sense. Uh, so now to assemble the necklace, I'm opening up a bunch of jump rings. You can see I've added in a large centerpiece. Um, if Future Vaughn remembers to, I'll put a card up on the screen, though there should at least be a link down in the video description showing how I made that, or how to make a pendant like the focal point there. But it was just something that... Uh, I didn't quite like it by itself as a pendant, but I think I thought it looked really nice in with the rest of this necklace. So I've opened a bunch of jump rings, and I'm making a necklace base by just attaching there onto the main pendant, and then putting on a bead link that we had made, closing the jump ring. I always try to get those ends butted up just as tight and snug against each other as what I can. Then adding on another jump ring. And then being as random as I can, picking up another uh, bead link, and I'll just continue building out the length of the necklace in this way. Um, and I do prefer to open up all the jump rings first because, well, it's technically the same amount of work, it just makes the assembling of the necklace feel like it's going by so much faster because I'm, you know, just, I don't know, it all come, just comes together there at the end. And that's just my own personal preference, but there's a million paths to the same, you know, kind of completed piece. So go go on your path, however you feel you like to do it. So now I, I haven't completed the length of the necklace, but I did want to show you guys how I'm attaching in the, uh, the charms. And what I'm doing is just on the jump ring that is attaching two of the links, I just link in one of the uh, spiral charms with a bead link on it. And again, not really worrying about... Um, maintaining any symmetry or you know anything it's I want it again to be just a cacophonous <laughs> visually cacophonous of, um, you know just just a mess but you know by it being all a purposeful mess I kind of think it has its own its own charm to it like a found objects piece or something and then I am adding in some spirals <clears throat> even without a bead link to give some variation in length now I do think it was a good idea to you know establish a matching tone of beads helps make the necklace not look too you know ma hodgepodge together and so this is how it ended up coming out. Now I just jump ringed on some chain you can see there added on a lobster claw some extender chain and I just folded a single length of chain over and attached it. So this is how our necklace came out. It's a very moving and fun necklace. If the camera will focus, there we are. Um, and you can wear it however high or low as you like, just depending entirely on your own personal taste. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from y'all. Uh, if you would like to support our channel, there's links down in the video description to where you can uh, find our Etsy store, our different social media, as well as um, our Patreon and stuff like that. So be sure to check that out, especially if you're interested in participating in our Craft Along with Vaughn kits uh, that we send out monthly. So more info down below. But uh, Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I really do hope that this was helpful to you in some way. I mean, there's no limit to what you can accomplish with your scrap if you're willing to, you know, experiment, do something that is like outside of your comfort zone that maybe seems a little bit weird, but then in reality it'll translate into, you know, 
something pretty cool. And even if it's not your favorite, if you're into like selling your work, it might be somebody else's favorite. So in that way you can turn your scrap wire into the bead fund. <laughs> so thanks again, guys, and I will see y'all next time. So until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>